Hi, my name is Al and in this video I want to do a tour through Valor.io, the DAP and DAP Plus software defined radio. So let's start. Now I switch to my Windows 11 desktop and the first thing is that you need to do is, of course you need to install Valor.io. For this video I already did that, but I will put the download link Below this video, you're just following the link, you can download the installer and then you simply install it. So, let's start. You have couples of options to start Valor.io. Um, for Windows 11, if you just installed it, you will find it here. But you can also type Valor.io into here and then you will find it. I just click to here and now you will see that it's a little bit empty because there are no stations inside the list. So the first thing is that you need to do is, yeah, you just start the station scan. To start it, just click to the three dots here and start station st scan. And while the sca station st scan is running, I can explain a little bit how to receive the signals because you need a little bit hardware for it. So the easiest is to use the RTL SDR devices. It can look like that. You have also a lot of different um, housings. So my device is something like, like that. That's the RTL SDR device. It's a pretty cheap device, which you can find on, you, on you the common web shops. We have also another option that's the AirSpy device. It's look like that. It's also from the outside, it's a little simple, but it's a much more expensive device. It costs like 100 euros but the quality is much much better we have also a couple of other options but the other options are more likely for advanced users i don't want to explain it right now so during my explanations um relative to just found some channels at this point i would like to stop the station scan um because it's a little bit boring for you to watch <laughs> how Valor.io is uh, scanning all the different channels. To stop it, it's pretty it's the same. Click to the three dots here and apply a stop station scan. So, yeah, um, how, is a GUI, um, how is the GUI set up? Here you will have all the st uh, stations. Um, we built in also um, a favorite option. So if you really like um, a station, just click to the star here and now it's added to the favorite list and to see the favorite list go to the drop down here favorites and you see here yeah, this um, the station absolute Bella in this case um, it's added to the uh, favorite list so if you don't like it anymore just click to here and then it will disappear then you can go back to all stations and then you see all the other sta stations. So to start a station, just click to your favorite station that you want to listen. So in this case, I take a DLF, you just click to it, and now you will see that Relator.io is starting and receiving the, the, the data and to decode it a little bit. So how you see some um, technical data, so it's DAP plus, we're using the um, high efficiency AIC codec, we have um, 48 kilohertz in stereo and the data rate is 104 kilobits per second. Um, because I want to border you with the German voice in this case, so we also built in a pretty cool feature, it's also pretty new in this version, it's here, it's you can um, change the volume, you just click do a long right click or a left click to here and then you can um, um, minimize the volume. What you also can do it, you just um, click once and then it's now it's 100% volume. If you click again, it's, it's completely muted. So in this video, I want to go with the mute because I don't want to have the, uh, the radio noise on my video. What is also really nice on digital radio is that the stations are broadcasting also pictures. Sometimes it's just the station um, icon, sometimes it's also um, something related to the um, actually broadcast. So 
today with DLF. Yeah, it's something with music. It's called Music Journal. So, and you see here, uh, it's also a violin. So that's also really nice. And the pictures, it's called Mod Slideshow because the pictures also can change. So also this depends on the station. Um, it will, you will see it here. And when you don't want to listen to the station anymore, you have also two options. So first you can just mute it that we did, but you can also hit this button, stop. And now the, um, the receiving is stopped. If you press the button again, then the music is starting or this, um, the, prod, the, the receiving of the station is running again. So um, what else to explain? <laughs> Of course, the burger menu here, if you click to here, then the, um, the station list will disappear. And it's also fully responsive because when we change the, when we change the, um, the layout, for example, if you open it on, on, on a smartphone or a tablet, it's like here. When you put, when you click to the um, burger menu again, you will also find all the stations here. So now I will go back and I would like to explain all the different settings. So you have a little bit more options in Relet.io. So first we can click to the three dots here and then we can go to station settings. So here we have um, the option, the automatic start of the last playing um, station. This means when you um, close Relet.io and you open it again, it will automatically and play the last station. Of course, we can try it. Yeah. We, we start, just switch it on. Then we will close Valet.io. Then we will start it again. And after a short of time, yeah, the station receiving is again there. Then we have also the other option to the display station name in the window title and here you, you will see the station name. This was also a request from the community. Some people really liked this feature. So you can add, uh, you can um, uh, enable it here. On, at this three dots, we have also as a settings menu. And here, yeah, we can, you can also apply like a, a full screen. I personally do this because I run Valet.io on a Raspberry Pi 4 with the official seven um, inch um, display and of course the seven inch display is a little bit small. I always run run valid.io in full screen. Here you will see all the different languages that you that we support at the moment. So if your language is missing, you just go to GitHub and the source code and there's also a little manual how to translate valid.io and then you just simply send me a pull request about that. And here we have also like global receiver settings. Usually the most easiest thing is to run um, automatic RF gain. So that's little for advanced users. And here you can also set the receiving device. In my case, because my dub reception is a little bit poor. So at my um, roof, I have a, a big antenna, which I can receive dub and I will, um, streaming all the DAP data or the receiving data over my network. So I using the input RTL TCP. That's basically, it's a TC RTL device here that is plugged in into Raspberry Pi and all the data is streamed over the network to my PC here. And of course we have to set like a IP address or I using like my host name. It's, it's just called radio server. And here you see also how many different devices we will support. So we're supporting the AirSpy, the RTL SDR, which I already explained, the SOPRI SDR, which is basically only working on, on Linux, and macOS, the RTL TCP that I'm using right now. And that's also for, for debugging and for advanced users. We can also um, play some um, dub or it's, it's more likely it's IQ data, so which it is, it's a little bit, that's something for another video. It's the raw data. So it's a really huge files, which all the receiving data is in, included. And here you can also change some um, style settings. So if you like to have like a light 
style or like a, a dark style or many different you can ju just change it here now so we also have some export settings because it's an open source project and many people are using Reddit.io just to hack or to uh, to hack um, DAP or to um, play with the technology. We also installed, we added some other stuff. So if you want to do, if you want to, if you want to enable it, just enable it here. Then you will also see some backend features, how to synchronize it. Now you see the, if you close it, the GUI is a little bit changed. So now each, like, um, when it's not like a Windows, like a modules having like um, a, a title here. It's like a service overview or mod slideshow. When you click to the small dots, you can also maximize it or you can remove it. And you have a big plus here underneath. If you click to here, you can also see how many different modules we built in. So I think the most interesting is like the spectrum. So I will a little bit make it a little bit bigger. So here you see the uh, spectrum. Um, I personally use the spectrum view a lot when I have a bad rece um, reception. So if it's not working or um, to align my antenna, it's a little bit um, easy. And here you see, oh, it's basically, a, it's, it's not a perfect looking spectrum, but I already saw much um, worse spectrums. If you want like to prefer the water file um, diagram, you can also enable here. And then you see here the um, frequencies. So <laughs> what's also really nice is here you see the, the frequency. So the channel 5C that I'm currently running, it's using um, it's um, the frequency 178 megahertz. So that's also pretty interesting with digital radio and DAP. This is not using like the common frequency from 88 me megahertz to like 105 megahertz and so on. So it's using much higher frequencies. That's basically the old um, analog TV frequencies that digital radio DAP and DAP Plus is using. You can also, what is also pretty interesting, like a server details uh, window. Here you see the current channel. You see also the device. You see the frequency correction. So at the moment, because the clock inside the RTL device, it's a little bit, it's not synchronized with the clock of the broadcasting. Um, so now we have an offset of um, 87 Hertz. So it's not, it's, it's not a lot, a little bit wondering why, but yeah, well, maybe because it's cold upstairs. <laughs> and here you see also the, the, uh, the signal noise ratio and some other stuff. You see also the current date because with digital radio also the date is broadcasted. If you don't need it anymore, you just click to the three dots here and remove. I mean, I don't want to go through all the different stuff, but for the, the, the debugging, it's also really nice to use the console output. Uh, it's not interesting right now. So just uh, let's, let's change to a different um, channel and how you see a lot of debugging. Um, something is not working or if you run into a bug, it's also worth to open the console output and see what's going on here. So if you don't want to use the um, expert view anymore, you just click to the expert settings, you close the expert mode. Yeah, and then um, valid.io is looking like the standard um, valid.io. If you have any more questions about valid.io, you have multiple options. First, you can use the um, comment option here at YouTube below. But if you run into an issue with Valid.io, if you have like a technical um, problem, I highly recommend that you go to our website. You can find the link below and then go to our GitHub account. And at the GitHub account, you have the a possibility to open a new issue. 
The reason behind I recommend on GitHub is because we are a huge community of people that can help you with your issue, uh, with your problem. So I really hope that you liked this video. Please thumb up and see you next time.